1320 WILS. Tiger Woods today announcing that he just underwent his fourth back surgery. He will now be back to golf for uh, well, at least a year now. Dr. Steven Weiniger with us. He's a chiropractor, a posture expert, really an internationally renowned posture expert. Find him at bodyzone.com. Dr. Weiniger, great to have you on WILS. Mike, thank you very much for having me. Glad to be here. Four back surgeries. Does that, does that sound right to you? The funny thing about it is they said at each one of them that it was a successful surgery. So <laughs> to me, I have to wonder a bit about how successful they are if you're going back to numbers two, three, and four. Yeah. Do, you, um, do you generally believe in back surgeries? That, do you think they help people? Back surgeries are a big box. They absolutely can help people. I've referred a lot of people for back surgery along the way. I've also helped a lot of patients that were told that they needed back surgery. 15 years later, they're, they're golfing, playing tennis, and they never had the back surgery. And what's the difference um, between the two? At what point do you, do you really feel someone needs back surgery? Some of the things that they're doing with Tiger has made sense because this is the first back fusion that they've done with him. First three surgeries were called microdiscectomies, where they just trimmed a little bit of the disc. And if you're going to have a back surgery, that's a better kind of back surgery than the kind of surgery that they're doing right now, which is more of a last resort back surgery. So first of all, when you, when you trim the disc, well, what does that do? What happens is the disc is kind of like a jelly donut, where the jelly in the bed works like a cushion between the blocking vertebra, and when force is not evenly distributed, it'll bulge in a direction, and if it bulges in the wrong way, it'll put pressure on the nerve, and when that happens, it hurts a lot. Oh, so they trim the bulge, essentially. Exactly, and they're basically trimming off that little bit of bulge. However, when you come back and do that once, twice, three times, at some point there's nothing left. So now what they're doing is, okay, we're going to take the disc out, put some metal in there, a cage, prop it up, put some protein in there to make it harden with bone, and in six months to a year, it'll be in one nice solid piece. Okay. And that's the problem, because golf is a one-sided sport that you're coiling the body all the way up in the direction to store energy and then releasing it. He's got one less level to store energy at, so there's going to be more and more pressure at the next level up. So wait, why are we seeing every golfer, professional golfer, having to do these surgeries? A lot of them end up having surgery, and especially a good golfer has good form where he's keeping the force distributed. One of the problems that Tiger has had is he's had a whole bunch of injuries. Each injury, when something hurts, you're going to move a little bit differently to mm -hmm. put the pressure someplace else. And after a while, you run out of places to put it. Talking to Dr. Steven Weininger, find him at bodyzone.com, internationally renowned posture expert. If, you, if you're not a golfer, a professional golfer, and you have this bulging issue, can you resolve it through any kind of posture adjustments? Oh, we've had some fantastic results with golfers by addressing their posture. And it's not just adjusting them from a chiropractic point of view, but it's teaching them how to do postural exercises so that in addition to everything else that they do, they're getting connected to working their body with really tight symmetry. So when they do all the other exercises, they've got really tight, strong form, and they're working the muscles with symmetry instead of just a little bit off. So you can, get, you can get the disc, you're saying, to kind of go back into place, essentially? And that's the idea of a lot of the rehab that's done is to try to make the pressure on the vertebral more even so that the disc gets sucked back in. Why, why did that not it, work with Tiger then? Stephen Weiner's personal opinion, the fact that he's had so many multiple other injuries, the fact that he has changed his swing so many times and he's worked with so many different trainers to keep on shifting forces back and forth, that the swing that he had once upon a time is not the swing that he has now. Okay, so and, when you trim the disc the way you described, does that change the ability to resolve the issue non-surgically once you've started doing that? Yeah, once you have a first surgery, in general, from a big numbers point of view, each subsequent surgery, the odds of success go down a little bit because of scar tissue. Whenever you cut tissue, there's always scar tissue. Scar tissue doesn't flex, doesn't stretch the way that normal tissue does. So you said now this is the real surgery is having this fourth one. What, what is the likelihood it will relieve him from pain forever? I think that he has a possibility, a decent possibility of getting out of pain where he feels a lot better. Again, this is my guess, mm -hmm. is that if he tries to go back hitting it hard, he's going to end up having more injuries a lot sooner, and the next ones will be less, will be even even more mm -hmm. restrictive of what he can do, because he's got less less levels to move. Mm -hmm. and, and this is what, somewhere in the middle of his back? where, where this, this, is being... this is at the very bottom of his back. This okay. is the lowermost disc, right below the belt line. And you're saying that they're essentially they fuse a single disc in that area, so that Correct. one portion of the spine won't be able to flex at all, just solid? 
In six to 12 months, it will be one big double dog. It won't move at all. And that's the idea. Once it doesn't move, it won't hurt. So it'll feel better. But then if he tries to do anything twisting, there's normally five vertebrae between the rib cage uh-huh. and the pelvis. So then right the pre- now, does the pressure then slowly move up to other discs in the back? Is that yeah, what happens? Exactly. And, and not only does it move up, it doesn't move up evenly. And that's why there's a whole other disease that surgeons talk about uh, that's called ALD, or adjacent level disease. Because once they fuse one level, then the force goes up one level, and the next level kind of zippers up to break down as well. That sounds like a nightmare, what you're saying right now. It is. I mean, Tiger, to me, is an amazing athlete. One of the things that we use in presentations is pictures of Tiger when he first started playing. As an athlete, he has amazing posture. He's got an amazing athletic body. People are saying sometimes that people can get by with only four discs because many people are born that way. Tiger's not a normal person. For him to try to do what he's been always able to do with less Putting that much stress on four discs instead of five discs right. is going to basically bumping up the pressure twenty five percent on a weekend body. I need to ask you this, Doctor Weiner, because we've had people, you know, doctors who are uh, followers of Doctor Sarno, and he believed a lot of back pain, most back pain, the vast majority, had nothing to do with actual physical problems. It was actually a body mind thing where your body was creating pain because of emotional issues, basically. And that even with all kinds of bulging discs, a lot of people feel no pain at all, no discomfort. What do you say to them? I believe that there's a huge psychological and what's called biopsychosocial involvement with back pain, but there's also a lot of people that have gotten relief from back surgery. I am not a fan of back surgery. I'm a chiropractor and a posture specialist. I think that sometimes there's a place for it. I also know all the time there's a place for empowering people to move, and I've seen a lot of people that the reason why we get them feeling better with postural exercises is we progressively teach them how they can move without pain. Yeah. Is, is it true, like, though, that you can have bulging discs and not necessarily have discomfort? Absolutely, absolutely. Having a bulging disc doesn't mean that you will have pain. However, the fact that all people with bulging discs don't have pain doesn't mean that your bulging disc is not causing pain. It, it, it's not, it's, one does not necessarily equal the other. It's Dr. Steven Weiniger. Find him online at bodyzone.com. He's not only a back expert, but he's an internationally renowned posture expert, and that really is, that can be the, the key to resolving your back issues. It's bodyzone.com. Dr. Steven Weiniger, right here on WILS. Dr. Weiniger, thank you very much. My thanks have me also to encourage everybody to have their annual posture picture. Dr. Weiniger, thank you, and we're back tomorrow. Good night.